What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Vet, and welcome to a mechanic short all about Mega Rayquaza and Airlock. If Ultra Series is your first time playing with Rayquaza, or if it's been a while since VGC 2016 for you, here's a summary of all the mechanics related to what Rayquaza can do. In order to Mega Evolve, Rayquaza must know the move Dragon Ascent. Because of this unique condition to Mega Evolution, Dragon Ascent wasn't allowed in VGC 2019 Sun or Moon series because those series banned Mega Evolution. In addition, you must have progressed far enough along in the game to use Mega Evolution via Mega Stones, even though Rayquaza itself doesn't use one. Rayquaza cannot Mega Evolve if it is holding a Z-Crystal. This is partially because the area you select to Mega Evolve and use a Z-Move are exactly the same. However, you still can't Mega Evolve Rayquaza even if you have another Pokémon use its Z-Move instead. As you can see here, even though Tapu Koko used its Z-Move, Rayquaza still doesn't have the option to Mega Evolve. When Rayquaza does Mega Evolve, though, it gets access to boosted stats and the powerful ability Delta Stream, which starts up the weather called Strong Winds. When Strong Winds are active, all flying-type Pokémon on the field lose their weaknesses to electric, ice, and rock-type attacks. For example, if I use Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko onto the opposing Mega Rayquaza, it's like I use Thunderbolt on a pure Dragon-type Pokémon. You can even see that it says the attack is not very effective. In a similar way, if Primal Kyogre uses Ice Beam into Mega Salamence while Strong Winds are up, it would only be two times super effective, not four times, allowing Mega Salamence to survive the attack. Because Strong Winds changes type matchups like this, it also has a minor impact on things like weakness policy and the type resist berries. A Rock Slide, which would normally be super effective on Mega Rayquaza, is instead a neutral hit in Strong Winds, and as a result won't activate Mega Rayquaza's weakness policy. Since Ice Beam is super effective against Dragon type though, it will activate weakness policy like normal. Removing Delta Stream behaves exactly like removing other Primal Weather, so please see the video on Primal Weather for a more complete explanation. As a review, until Mega Rayquaza is switched out, gets KO'd, or its ability gets negated, strong winds will remain active on the field. For example, using Roar here on Mega Rayquaza will cause it to leave the field, taking strong winds with it. Rayquaza's Airlock is also an extremely useful ability. When Airlock is active, the effects of weather on the field are temporarily suppressed. The weather itself doesn't leave the field, but the effects of the weather are completely ignored. For example, if Primal Gradon has Desolate Land active, Rayquaza's Airlock does not remove Desolate Land, but it does allow Kyogre to freely use Water-type moves. As you can see, Rayquaza's Airlock gives Kyogre the freedom to one-hit KO Primal Groudon again. Again, this requires Rayquaza to be on the field. Since the weather isn't actually removed, if I switch out Rayquaza here, Water Spout will once again be negated like normal. It's not just Primal Weather that's negated though. Airlock can negate the effects of Strong Winds, negate abilities that boost speed and weather, like Ludicolo Swift Swim in the rain, and prevent Toxicroak from hurting or healing itself with dry skin. Everything I've said about Airlock applies to Cloud9 as well, so Pokemon like Golduck or Drampa can take advantage of Water-type attacks unfazed by Primal Groudon. Remember that since Airlock and Cloud9 only negate the effects of weather, if a Primal or Mega Rayquaza leaves the field after fainting or switching, that weather is now completely gone like normal. Thanks for watching this mechanic short on Mega Rayquaza and Airlock. If you want to see more of this content, check the description below for a playlist of mechanic shorts on Ultra Series mechanics. Until next time, have a good one.